I'm Dr. Heidi Waldorf. I am a dermatologist and director of laser and cosmetic dermatology at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York, New York, and have a private practice, Waldorf Dermatology and Laser Associates in Nanuet, New York. I'm Dr. Steve Fagan. I'm an oculoplastic surgeon in Boca Raton, Florida. We have Abby here today, and we're basically going to evaluate her uh, for a consideration of neuromodulator treatment uh, with botulinum toxin type A. Uh, she has had uh, Botox before, actually, by brand botulinum toxin type A, and uh, is interested in our evaluation and how we would proceed with her treatment. One of the things, if you look straight into the camera, uh, you know, I look for facial harmony, facial asymmetries, things that I may improve upon basically after a good aesthetic evaluation and after I hear what the patient's interested uh, to accomplish with the treatments. What were, are some of the things you may be interested in, in uh, improving upon with these treatments? Oh, I would love to improve on my lines here, here, and up here. Okay. So it makes perfect sense that those areas are, are areas that are well treated with uh, neuromodulators. And um, one of the things I notice, again, are, is facial harmony and asymmetry. If you look right into the camera, you notice that the right eye and smile, a real good smile now, tends to small up a little bit more with animation, tends to be the small side, uh, smaller eye. Uh, and you need to be careful when you treat with neuromodulators that you're actually going to treat somewhat asymmetrically. If the patient is interested and you bring it to their attention and they want some more harmony, I may actually, when I treat crow's feet, bring the injections closer into the eye on the right side. Uh, one of the things that you evaluate also is, and I think on most of these evaluations with any of your patients, it's hands-on. And you want to see, are, are the brows in a situation where if you wanted to correct some of these uh, horizontal lines, uh, with neuromodulator that you're going to drop the brows much. And her brows are actually fairly stable, and I think with fairly low dose, uh, you can accomplish that and even in the mid-forehead region. She's complaining mostly of the uh, lines here and, and across. These are somewhat static lines that are there even when she doesn't animate, but do a good frown for me, if you would. I like you're mad. Mm. There you go. And, you know, a lot of them are not only her Perseris lines, but it's what we sometimes call bunny lines. Frown real hard again mm. and smile as you do that. You know, a real good frown, like you're mad. Mm. And she radiates in here, so that's a treatment that I will typically give a, a relatively standard uh, five pattern injection, one, two, three, four, five, hit the proceris to get some softening of the, the, the horizontal line uh, across the bridge of the nose, and then maybe uh, three or four units of uh, neuromodulator to the, to the, uh, the, lat side of the lateral side of the nose, uh, which gets the bunny lines. Uh, there are other areas I might treat. Uh, would be, you know, the crow's feet as we talked about. I think you have to be careful in patients like this. Smile really well. You don't want to get a shelving effect by treating heavily on the crow's feet. So I'll probably do, do a fairly, fairly low dose treatment to the crow's feet, maybe a total of eight units on each side at max. And uh, I'd be very interested in what Dr. Waldorf has to add to that. Well, thank you. Um, I agree with the overall evaluation. I think the most notable thing is that she does have these static lines. And one thing I would stress to the patient is that even with toxin treatment, we are not going to get rid of these. Um, she is a patient who in my office would classically be offered a series of fractionated laser treatments um, to help with these static lines because no amount of toxin is going to help these lines or the lines that are still here at rest because these are as I'll, I would tell my patients from sun damage over time and making the um, expression, they are there persistently. I would have, I would, let's look again, um, frown again really hard. What you can see is that she's frowning all the way from over here. And so I think my, um, my injection pattern, I would definitely inject immediately. I would inject bunny lines, like a bunny. Go like a bunny, mm. yes right in here because many patients come complaining of these lines and just treating the glabella here is not helpful. I would probably then do a small injection at the point where I'm seeing the corrugator uh, at its strongest here and my hope would be that by doing that, raise up your brow, I would get a little brow elevation. The nice thing about the, here is that even when she raises up maximally, I really don't see a lot of lines here. And um, because her forehead is relatively low and most of this is medial, I do think that she's probably going to get enough spread to soften these lines. 
I wouldn't want to take more of this away by injecting up into the forehead because my concern is her brow in the middle is already a little heavy and I wouldn't want to make that heavier. So I think that would be helpful. In my practice, smile again. I would probably um, either do very light toxin above here, going above to get the lines in this area rather than below because I'm concerned when she smiles, smile again. Do you see how she already has a little dimpling in here? She really has this tear trough that goes around and my concern is at the lateral canthus portion if I don't put filler in and I just flatten that, she will have that shelving that you, that you mentioned. Um, the other thing, frown for me, show me your bottom teeth. Relax. Mm -hmm. Depending on what she was interested in, again, this would be very subtle. You know, obviously we'd be talking about other interventions to pull back her face and reshape if she wanted, but a small amount of toxin for the uh, DAOs here might be helpful. That would be a secondary, a secondary issue. But that would be my, um, that would be my observation. But again, in terms of uh, realistically, I would tell her that if she doesn't like those lines, she does need another intervention. I completely agree. One of the things that I treat these areas with, if uh, knowing, you know, uh, going forward that it's not going to be completely eradicated with neuromodulators is with a, a, a very light or reconstituted hyaluronic acid. I think you can treat those fairly well. I completely agree that the lower lids probably would benefit from some energy-based device to try to improve skin quality. One of the things I noticed when you were having her show her teeth, it's something you need to be careful of when you're treating levator alequinasia for the bunny lines, is smile really good. She doesn't raise her upper lip very much. And if you give a lot of drug into this area and you get any migration that affects the lip elevators, you will actually further smile again with your teeth. You'll further depress the lip. So that's something I'm, I'm really careful about and that you watch their smile much as you did to show her lower teeth. I completely agree. And you can see her depressors are a little different on each side. Smile really good again. And if I was going to give her any DAO treatment uh, or, or mentalis treatment, I would want to make sure if I was going to skew on the side of getting more lip depressor, I'd want it more on the right. Smile again really wide with the teeth because just to get a little more elevation and symmetry on this side, if you cause smile wide again with your teeth, I don't want to cause this effect by knocking out the lip depressors on the left. So if anything, I would want to make sure I shied a little bit to the right side. The other thing that you started to mention was giving her some filler in here. Uh, and I think that would be a good area to reduce the appearance of any uh, perimental hollows or pre -gel sulcus and jowling is to give her some sort of hyaluronic acid filler, any filler that you'd like in here. Yeah, some, I think I, for someone like her, I might use um, PLLA or calcium hydroxylapatate to give her some lift in the lateral area and along the jawline. One question, have you had any nasal surgery? When I was 16. Right, and so I think what I do find in patients who have had rhinoplasty, a lot more of them end up with these bunny lines, and one of the other issues that could help this, I want uh, to um, continue what you were saying, is if we put some dilute HA in here, hyaluronic acids in this area, not only, we're not doing that just to fill the lines, but if you give her some of the nasal shape sure. back here, you can also give lift. And if you're putting filler in here, you're not putting filler just to fill the lines. You're putting filler to give some shape and elevation because as we age, this area, even at rest, falls down. And at a certain point, even getting the, um, the lift from the toxin will not take it all away. So some filler, and a hyaluronic acid because of location, in here, in here, and then along the surface would be helpful, be being, being very wary of the vasculature. I completely agree. Any questions for us? One of the things you may want to be careful about, I know everyone's into to cheek uh, reflation. I think in someone like this who has the tear trough, as you mentioned, when you expand the cheeks, you tend to deepen the, the trough. So uh, that's probably a thing I would avoid on her, even though it becomes very popular to treat with cheek, you know, by making the appearance of the nasal labial fold better and so forth. I think this is an area that will probably give her more problems and she has a nice full cheek. Anyway. I, I think the lateral face, and for her in terms of the nasal labial fold, what I would do instead would be uh, going here into the piriform aperture instead, being again very mindful of the um, of the vasculature there, because then if you lift the nose somewhat, uh, pardon me as I lift your nose, okay. if you lift the nose somewhat, then you're going to lift everything by forming a platform under the nose. You can lift everything up without ex 
giving her a bigger cheek and if anything you'll have more of a transition from the upper lip into the cheek and then onward with the other um, interventions we mentioned for the forehead. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of, a lot of us have uh, you know, heard of our colleagues fleeing from treating the nasolabial fold, but in this area for sure, I think that would probably be her best option. At, although it would not be the nasolabial fold It'd per the, se. The more it would proximal be proximal aspect. Right, well, right, because um, if you just do her nasolabial fold, you'll accentuate the cheek, yeah. but if you, lift, if you lift underneath and give her a platform under the nose, then if anything, you're going to lift the lip and she gets a mild lip augmentation without actually filling the lip. Mm -hmm.